G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is a Tesla Cannon. This is one of the new Creation Club items launched during the late 2019 Creation Club item dump, so that's pretty cool. You'll notice how high quality this thing is. The models and textures look very, very good. The modernized version of this updated with uh, Fallout 4's overhaul graphics and engine. I mean, not engine, but still. It definitely looks the part. We're using the same animations as this weapon, and the um, reload animations are that of the BFG, which is to say there isn't any. Also notable about this weapon is it fires the fusion cells, which are super plentiful, but the electron char- no, yeah, electron charge packs of this thing originally did fire, which you'd load in the back, by the way, why isn't that a fusion cell? Um, well, they were plentiful anyway, and the Tesla cannon, I think it only shot one, whereas for Gatling lasers, you'd need hundreds of them to get them to work, so feeding this thing back in Fallout 3 was never too much of a problem. They did fix that in New Vegas, so by making it, um, take up four or five per shot, depending on which, um, Tesla cannon you used. And the Tesla beaten prototype still exists, you might have seen the, uh, the promotional images of this, but yeah, you can modify this thing to be akin to that. So basically, this thing is like a hit-scan heavy gun, and just to compare the damage first off, you'll notice how the, the missile launcher and the Fat Man heavily outclass it, but keep in mind this thing does a higher rate of fire, it is hit-scan too, and you'll fire, it'll it'll do a plasma, um, no, a pulse grenade explosion, which I, honestly, I don't like the sound that it makes, but yeah, it's there, and you can have the beaten assembly here, which makes the beaten less unique, but whatever. There are references to Elijah's jury rig Tesla cannon. We'll just keep this with the regular Tesla cannon assembly for a hit scan pulse grenade. And you can improve the um, barrels on this a little bit. So the um, beam focuses don't actually do a lot. They give you a little bit less range and accuracy. But honestly, not great. The improved beaten amplified lens gives you much better damage. And I'm not sure what's talking about recoil here. The recoil isn't really that much of a problem on this thing. We do lose a little bit of range and accuracy, which makes it a little bit less accurate in bats. And the barrel doesn't match, but I don't really care. Anyway, so for the receivers, you've got a whole bunch of things here. So spark gap, Tesla, improved critical shot damage and accuracy. So basically calibrated receiver. This one increases the range and apparently damage, which is a lie. The wave oscillator just gives you a slight increase of damage and a magnified stuff for getting higher now. So this is like a powerful calibrated receiver, I suppose. And this is the uh, extra version of that. And there's a magnified wave oscillator. But basically, you want to chuck on the triple resonant uh, wave oscillator there for superior damage. Because 370 is getting a lot closer to the missile launcher and Fat Man, as you saw before. And there's a legendary effect slot, which I will not be using. And to quickly... Uh, very experimental. Okay, hopefully it doesn't break on me. But we're going to change this into a beaten. Now, the difference between the regular one and the beaten is the beaten will um, chain like a Tesla rifle and it also fire um, yellow or orange um, electricity beams, which is actually kind of awesome, but mm, not really keen on giving it too much of this in the amplified lens or the, yeah, the beaten stuff, not really a fan of. No, that's the good stuff. The jury rig stuff ain't great. So apparently Bethesda don't like Elijah very much. And now I can get... The chaining damage for 370, so they're both doing the same, but I feel like there's a little bit of unmarked damage when it comes to using this thing, but enough of me talking, let's go and shoot things. Alrighty, so here we are outside of Immersive Gunners Plaza. I think with the Tesla rifle, we'll be able to take care of these guys very easily, but before we start doing that, meet Carla, ex-pack member from Nuka World, now Captain's Angel, is part of the uh, Nuka World pack of uh, these companions coming out. I don't know, whenever I feel like working on it. Her look is meant to look a little bit more wild, less elegant than um, Kira. So, you know, she'll probably get along well with Iris. They're both weirdos. But anyways, so this is what this thing looks like in first person. When you aim down sights, you've got the same sort of animations as a missile launcher. You can tell from the foregrip as well. But where you put your head when you aim down sights is where the uh, iron sights on the missile launcher would be. But you've got no point of reference on where that actually is aiming. But if you aim in third person, you get a little bit of a dot, which... Honestly, isn't all that accurate either. I think there's a little bit of base spread on the weapon that the um, aim down sights doesn't really cure. It's not pinpoint accurate because I've aimed at things and not been able to hit them. There's a fight going on there. That's not my problem, but let's get started, shall we? Now, as per heavy guns um, with the explosive effects on them, not like legendary explosive, but, you know, 
explosive area of effect damage, what you want to do is target packs of enemies and spread the damage between four or five people. So that's my first little idea is to do that. And god, I really hate the PC controls because um, sometimes when you press the 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 D and the A key or the A and the S key, you'll run off in the wrong direction, which is not good. But as you can tell with this, you get good damage out of it. The damage, um, splash damage isn't that great, but when you get those direct hits, you, you can do over 1k damage very easily. We didn't actually see how much we did there because of the VAT camera view. Hopefully we'll get this one. No, we won't. Just, just hit him. There we go. We got 1050. That's pretty good. We can do better though with headshots, and we're being swarmed right now, but here's the thing about the Tesla rifle in this. So I'm pressing the S key and I run off in that direction despite holding down D, and that really fucks with me. I don't like that. I don't know what what caused that, so it might even be worth using a controller sometimes because the controls just, on PC at least, are fucked. But that's only a third person problem. If I'm playing in first, that should be fine. So we are being swarmed right now, but you can spam this thing. And that's for is that's for a few reasons. Reason number one is it fires fusion cells, which are a dime a dozen. Super light in your inventory too. So literally the game doesn't object you to just spamming this thing everywhere, which is, you know, objectively extremely powerful because, well, you don't need to bother aiming with this thing. And despite having less damage than you'd get out of a single shot out of a missile launcher, for instance, well, that's not really going to matter because it's a hit scan and you can just keep on firing it. Does the beaten prototype, which I'm going to call it a beaten prototype because Fallout New Vegas, does it give you the same effect? No, it actually sucks really, really bad. I am playing on very hard difficulty right now, which you know gives me a half damage penalty, but compared to the damage I was getting out of... <laughs> out of the regular barrel on this thing, there's like no reason, but you'll notice how the arcs can actually spread out pretty far, which is okay, but I'm going to get absolutely murdered by these three gunners, now two gunners that are shooting at me, because I just can't do anything, so I'm pretty sure that is a deal breaker for the beaten barrel, not really sure what the point of it is when this, the... I'm going to crit that feral ghoul, but you're yeah, not really sure what the point of that thing is if it's just outclassed by its um, explosive pulse grenade hit scanny uh, counterpart. Very dramatic death there. I like being able to exit bats as soon as you want to. It gives you great freedom, so I don't have to keep on watching something. And if there's something potentially seizure-inducing, we can... In Wait, this weapon is seizure-inducing. Maybe I should put a seizure warning in the description because this is ridiculous. So, yeah, this thing also has infinite ammo. I mean, you'll notice how the ammo capacity is at 15, but as soon as you need to reload, wham, you press R, you, you press the reload button, a square on, on PC, I mean, on PlayStation, I think it would be X on Xbox. You get that all back instantly, so you've effectively got a never-ending legendary effect there. Which means you don't even have to be careful about where you place your shots as long as you're, you know, not shooting them too far in front of you. Well, I guess too close in front of you. Which will kill you very easily. And yes, that is a Battlefield 1 sound that I get when I actually make a kill. But yeah, this thing does kill you very easily. If I were to go up to this wall and shoot it, wham, instantly dead. I'm glad you're wearing underwear. Alrighty, so here we are at Felon's department store. It's kind of like the uh, baby West Tech. It, it sort of took a couple of years to grow in Fallout 76, and now it's just, now it's just, you know, grew into something that is good. Um, back in Fallout 4, however, Super Mutant Warlords are a lot more tanky than their 76 counterparts. They'd never stop level scaling with you, and they could have in excess of a thousand health rather than the 750 that they're stuck with in Fallout 76. And it appears that we can one-shot these guys if we decide to um, hit them with a sneak and a critical at the same time. But, yeah, maybe not all that useful if we do that. So, I think a lot of people are subscribed and watch me from Fallout 76 videos and haven't seen me play a lot of Fallout 4 before. I assume a lot of people that did play... Fuck off, Super Mutant. I assume a lot of people that have played Fallout 76 have played 4, but... 
None of them seem to be ready for the angels. The angels are a little bit too hot for them, I think, and they, they react in very strange ways. But anyways, regardless of that, you'll notice um, this thing ain't the best in terms of using the penetrator perk, which normally a bullet you could get through. Even on criticals, I probably wouldn't have been able to nail that doggo. So I believe that's just got something to do with how the... Um, how the electronic, the, the fucking electrons going through the air, that's the lightning beam, the Tesla beam, I guess, explodes into a pulse grenade effect, and where that pulse grenade effect lands is where the damage is, and if it bounces on a wall where it can't actually reach people or get to people, that's when you'll have problems with it, so... Not, probably not the best weapon to use in VATS, but you, you can get away with it, you don't have a lot of shots in this, this thing with VATS, so you can't make great use of concentrated fire, but if you want to, you know, quad up against all of your, <laughs> on your targets in VATS and... Okay, I was going to say, if you can't reload this thing in VATS, then we're going to have a problem here. But it seems to work. And since we are in close quarters inside now, we can bounce the splash damage a lot more reliably. Go away, Radvoch. Just got to make sure we take two steps out of our own explosive radius. But gun, bush, gun bashing doesn't suck in this game, so we can actually get away with bopping the uh, little rad roaches on the head. Make gun bashing great again. I'm going to use mods. Speaking of making stuff great again, I'm going to use mods in Fallout 76 to make Angel sexy again. Instead of Magger, it's going to be Massa or Massa or po Polis Massa from Star Wars. Anyways, should be two doggos spawning in because I walked inside this room. Or rather, the rad roaches ate them all because they were glowing, but yeah. You've got the damage to deal with things, and you've got the rate of fire, and the ability to reach out to things. It's, it's a very odd weapon because it's incredibly overpowered. Like, taking a look back on maybe the, f the first couple of weapons that came out, the, um, the cranking um, gorse rifle, that was okay. It, I feel like it was um, less... Good then. I mean, I feel like a regular gorse rifle was better than it because it didn't have the damn cranking things, but it was alright. The handmade shotgun was terrible because it was basically just a reskin double barrel. You can get an extra 50% mag size if you've got a triple barrel one. And then you had the a the AMR, which was terrible. The solar cannon was lackluster, but now they've just turned the dial to completely overpower this. Not with this thing, though. This thing's more in line with other um, Creation Club things because it just sucks. But this thing is completely overpowered, so yeah. One idea I do have for it if I want to patch this thing is to give it some sort of scope so you can aim down sights and have a better, uh, you know, a better idea of where you're actually aiming in first person or third person because it fades into a scope anyway. But yeah, that, that's something I can think about. Let's move on to a monster. Alright, so the victim here is going to be... I think it's the Overlord, Myler Killclaw Overlord, basically upscaled crab man. And what I'm going to do is just fry his face or attempt to do that. He is susceptible to being staggered, so it looks like we can stun lock him as long as we're hitting him. The criticals here don't seem to be doing a lot, to be honest, although he does have a very big health bar. Let's test whether we can actually completely stop him in his tracks. Okay, we're still in caution at this point because, you know, nothing says stealth like a giant lightning strike going through the air and exploding in plasma or pulse grenade death. Wow, really? It's going to be this easy? That is if we can hit him. And I guess this is why you want less recoil because it means it's less spammable. But honestly, I feel like I'm hitting quite fast enough. Question is whether he decide to figure out where I am. No. Okay, that was shockingly bad. You'll notice how the beats per minute on... Carla wasn't even worried there. She just kept it a stable 60. I feel like a 60 beats per minute means you're super fit, right? Because lower beats per minute means you are fitter. It means your heart's better at pumping blood around your body. So that might be a consequence of endurance. Oh, this lobster is 110% fucked. <laughs> 54 meters. Interestingly, this mod probably would have been made by Americans, yet they use the metric system anyway. They must be those smart Americans. Alright, let's finish this off against one last monster. And there's Diablos again, being an attention seeker. He's part of that M27 mod that I downloaded and used uh, was a while ago now, but... Our main target here is definitely this Bloodthirsty Withered Feral Ghoul. 
And you'll see before that I'm getting a lot of staggers on him, which is part of um, how heavy gun and weapons scale. You'll not only get the damage as you level up the perk, you'll actually get stagger chance. And I believe that in conjunction with the stagger rating on this weapon, which I assume is either heavy or ex uh, I think it's large or extra large. We actually ragdolled that guy. Well, it's definitely a, wo a monster killer, if you want to put it that, that way. It may, may not stagger things like Behemoth, so you might be a little bit more in trouble when it comes to actual giant creatures. An explosive gorse rifle. Nice. Um, but yeah. It's, it's a pretty versatile weapon. You can't really go wrong with it, to be honest. Especially when you've got it set up with this. If you're playing on lesser difficulties and wanting to use this, say in survival, you could probably get away with it. And I assume you won't actually kill yourself if you aim at the ground with this, which is, you know, useful, and I do, I kind of like that extra, um, glow that it adds to your, I think if you put it away, though, the glow goes somewhere else for a second, but, you know, it goes away, sometimes it doesn't, that actually still happens in Fallout 4, but anyways, I think you get the point, if you'd like to see this thing in your game, four dollars it's worth, which, you know, it might seem like a lot, if you're not really used to paying that much for content, but I've been using Atom Stores in Fallout 76, and $4 for a standalone weapon that does stuff that, you know, the vanilla game doesn't do, unlike the um, combat rifle reskins we've got, and a new quest line, which may or may not work for you, it didn't work for me, hopefully it worked for you. My game is modded to absolute insanity, insanity, so maybe that's why, but I've got console commands anyway, so I don't really care, and plus, like I said before, Oxon's already done his quest guide, so go watch that if you're interested, I'm just here for shooting stuff. Thank you for watching, guys.